Are you tired of skill requiring boss fights? Are you sick of having to perform combos in order to win? Don't you just want to mash your way through a boss fight? Well, I got great news for you because Nagumo's final fight is exactly what you're looking for. Here are 4 reasons why Nagumo is the greatest boss in the Yakuza series. Number 4. The variety. The moves that you're mostly going to see executed by Nagumo are this move and this move, which is about as far as RGG movesets go. But if you were expecting a brainless, no skill fight like the chainsaw guy in Yakuza 4, that's exactly what you get. Actually, forget what I said. He also has this stupid grab which he'll do even if your back is turned, causing the same animation as if you were grabbed from the front, because RGG Studios didn't have enough budget to make a separate animation if you're grabbed from behind. Number 3. The combo potential. The two moves forementioned are his counterattacks that he'll perform nearly every time you hit him, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. You can't do back combos because he immediately retaliates. <laughs> There are zero corners on this map, so you can't stun him in a corner. There are one or two very gimmicky walls that you absolutely can't wall stun consistently on, and hell, you can't even do regular stun combos consistently because Kiryu is as fast as a beluga whale, causing him to retaliate in the middle of a combo and kick your ass. The only way to do regular stun combos is by being absolutely frame perfect with quick step attacks or stun locking him into oblivion which will require you not to wall stun him even once before that and his health needs to be below 50%. Oh my god! Oh. Number 2. The Solution If you've never fought him and you see this, you're probably wondering, well, how did the developers think a player is supposed to have fun in this fight? Well, uh... Um, uh, they didn't. But, they did do us a favor by not giving him a blocking or dodging mechanic, believe it or not. He never blocks your attacks and dodges once in a blue moon, so I like to think that there was this one developer with an IQ of more than 80 who told the others that the boss fight looked like shit, so the others agreed after thinking about it and just said, you know what? He's drunk, and drunk people don't block or dodge, so they ended up making a Dragon Ball Z kind of fight where you just smack each other in the face until one passes out or something. I don't know, I don't watch anime, but that's your best way of winning this fight. Just block his counters and keep punching until he's gone. Or you can just tie your drop spam. Or maybe, just maybe, don't play Aquas and play Sifu instead. <laughs> Number 1. The Logic if you have never played Yakuza 6, you're probably wondering why did they make this homeless looking dude so strong? Why did they give him so much hyper armor? It has to make sense in terms of story, right? Right? Hell no! Well, the reason why they are fighting is because, uh, pride or some shit? I actually forgot. I think Kiryu was like suspicious of him, so he got mad about it and just went Super Saiyan mode. <laughs> I think that's about all the sense that the story makes of this fight, but despite the horrible fight, I'm still feeling awesome. And you wanna know why? Because I got Payday 3 and Mortal Kombat 11, thanks to the amazing Fear Operative, who keeps supporting your boy and pulling me out of depression, so thank you so much brother, and if y'all wanna see the most stylish way to beat this fight, make sure to stay tuned because I'm making a video destroying him soon, and I also won't take any damage, obviously. Let me know which fight you think I should cover next, make sure to subscribe if you didn't for more Yakuza content, join the no damage community, link is in the description, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Peace! Yeah.